Hello, in this video we're going to look at taking an exponential equation and reducing it to a linear form, which just kind of means taking that exponential equation and rewriting it in the form of a straight line. Now the reason I'm going to want to do this is say I conduct an experiment and I get lots of data and I plot the data in a graph and it looks like a curve. Well I might then want to extrapolate from this data and see what's going to happen in the future or even interpolate and see what's happening within data values. And to do this, I'm going to need to find a curve of best fit. And that's quite difficult to find. And so if I rewrite the equation in the form of a straight line, I could then convert this data so that it follows a straight line. And finding a line of best fit is pretty straightforward to do. So I could do that. And then from the line of best fit, could work backwards and find the equation of the curve and use this for extrapolation or interpolation. Okay, and that's what we're going to look at in this first example. Now, there is a second type of question you might see that's ever so slightly different, and I'm going to do that in a second video that I will link in the video description. So once you've watched this one, you can go and watch the second one, and then you've covered both of the examples that you might see. If this video is useful, then do go over to my channel where I have loads of other maths tutorials. Okay, so let's look at the first question. So we have a scientist that's recording the population of rabbits over five years, and they record the data in this table. Now they think the growth of the population can be modelled by the following exponential equation where a and b are constants and we're asked to find the values of both a and b. So how could we do this? Well, one method would be to take a couple of data values from the table, for example x equals 1 and y equals 50 and say x equals 2 and y equals 120 and substitute those into our equation. So we would get for the first one 50 is equal to a multiplied by b to the power of 1 and the second one would be 120 equals a multiplied by b squared. And then from here we would solve these simultaneously and find values of a and b. The problem with this method is if I was to instead pick for example x equals 4 and y equals 380 and x equals 5 and y equals 520 that's going to give me a different answer for a and b and so it's not a very reliable method of finding the value of those constants. Okay, so we're going to have to think of something else. Now, if we plot the data values in a graph, it's going to look something like this. And so you could perhaps see why they think this follows an exponential equation, because if I draw a line of best fit or a curve of best fit, it's going to look like an exponential graph like this. It's not a very good line, but that's the idea. Now, what we want to do is basically find a curve of best fit. And we could maybe guess values of A and B, but that's kind of that could take ages and it's not a very accurate method. So instead, we're going to do something called reduction to linear form. We're going to turn this exponential equation we've got here into one of a straight line. And from this, okay, the data is going to change from being an exponential curve to a straight line. And we can find the values of the gradient and the y-intercept and use that to find A and B, which is what we're now about to do. So to start off with, let's start with our exponential equation, y equals a multiplied by b to the power of x. Then we take logarithms of both sides. I'm going to choose to use logarithms base 10. And so I get log of y equals log of a b to the power of x. I'm then going to use my rules of logarithms to rewrite the right hand side as log a plus log b to the power of x. And then I'm going to use my power rule to bring the x down to the front of the logarithm. So let me copy and paste this down to save a bit of time. So there we go. And we get plus x multiplied by log b. I'm now going to rewrite this in a slightly different order, uh, just because I think it will make it clearer to see. But I'm not changing it at all. So you can see here, uh, I've rewritten it. So it's log y is equal to log b multiplied by x plus log a. It's the same thing. I've just switched the order around. So if we look at this equation we've got here, okay, it's actually the equation of a straight line. So why is that? Well, remember, we're substituting in different values of x, which represents how many years have passed. And when we substitute those values of x in, we get an output of y, which is the population. Okay, so let's look at this equation we've got. Well, as I substitute in different values of x, okay, remember a and b are just fixed numbers. So I substitute in some different values of x and I get an output which is equal to log y. So technically, I'm going to use capital letters to, to write this. Log y is just the output, so I could call that capital Y. Log b is just some number that's in front of x. Okay, so I'll call that m. 
and x is the number we're substituting in. And finally, log a is again just another number, so I'm just adding on a number, another number, let's call that c. And hopefully you can kind of see this is in the form of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. So if we compare okay, our equation that we've got in terms of logarithms to our straight line, well you can see x is just the x, it's not changed at all, so we're just substituting in our values of x. But if we look at the output y, it's actually log of y, it's not just y. And so what I'm going to do is look at my data and I'm going to keep the x values the same. Let me bring this down too so we can have a look at it better. I'm going to keep the x values the same because you can see the x's haven't had anything happen to them. But instead of keeping my output as y like we have here, I'm going to change it to log of y. So let me write that in the table. So I'm going to get log 50, log 120, log 250, and so on. You get the idea, log 380 and log 520. Okay. I'm now going to go over to Desmos and what I'm going to do is plot onto Desmos the x-axis being the year, so this row here, but my y-axis, instead of putting in the population of 50, 120, I'm instead going to have my y-coordinates as log 50, log 120 and so on. And let's see what happens to the data when I do that. Okay, so you can see here I've plotted the raw data that the scientists gathered about the population of rabbits into Desmos. So after year one, uh, there's 50, after year two, there's 120 and so on. Now, if you remember, when we wanted to reduce this to a linear form, we had to take logarithms of the y-coordinate. So I'm just going to type that in here. So I'm going to take logarithms of the y-coordinate and see what happens when I do that. Because this should turn our data into a straight line. So I'm now just typing in log of the y-coordinate. And when I do that, you can see, I'm going to have to zoom in a bit here, but you can see the data now is now in the form of a straight line. Okay, And I'm going to find a line of best fit of this data. Now the way I'm going to do that in Desmos is by typing in y equals mx plus c and pressing equals. And now I've got these sliders here for both the gradient and the y-intercept. So I'm going to change the value of these sliders to try and get the most accurate line of best fit that I can. So I'm going to make it a bit less steep, I'm going to increase the y-intercept a bit, and I think actually that's quite a good line of best fit. Okay, So I've got the gradient is 0 0.3 and I've got the y-intercept is 1.4. So I'm going to remember these values and go back and now solve the rest of the question using these two values and you'll see how we do that now. So I've made a note of both the gradient and the y-intercept that we had. So how are we going to use this to find the values of a and b? Well, let's take a look. When we reduced our equation to a linear form, we said the gradient was the coefficient of x, wasn't it? So that's log b. So I know log of b must be equal to 0 0.3. So let me write that down. So I know log b must be equal to 0 0.3. And this number on the end, log a, must be the plus c. It's my y-intercept. And so I also know that the log of a is equal to 1.4. Now I just need to solve these. Well I've got log base 10 of b equals 0 0.3 so let's rewrite this in an exponential form and I get b is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.3 and do the same with the other one. I know that a is equal to 10 to the power of 1.4 so I could leave these exactly as they are and go back to my exponential equation that we had at the start and substitute these values in and that would give me that y is equal to 10 to the power of 1.4 multiplied by b, which was 10 to the power of 0 0.3, all to the power of x. So I could leave it like that. Or I could type both of these values into my calculator and say give them to say three significant figures. So y would be equal to 25.1 multiplied by, let's do the other one as well, 0 0.3. And to three significant figures, that gives me 2 to the power of x. So now what I'm going to do is go back into Desmos and I'm going to plot this curve against the original data and see how it works as a curve of best fit. Okay, so you can see now we're back at the raw data we had at the start. I'm now going to plot the exponential curve we found, so using our values of a and b. And I'm going to use the exact values of a and b. So we've got y is equal to uh, our value of a was 10 to the power of 1.4. And then we multiplied that by 10 to the power of 0 0.3 all multiplied by x. And so you can see here we've got our exponential curve that we've found 
And you can see actually it fits quite nicely through all of our data points. And so now we could use this to either interpolate within the data or extrapolate to find what happens to the population perhaps in the future. There's another kind of situation that you might see that's very similar, uh, and I'm gonna cover that in the next video. So I'll leave a link to my playlist on logarithms and exponentials below. But if you did find this video useful, please do go over to my channel where I have loads of other maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.